and we're recording. So this is the March 2nd uh, circulation SIG meeting at 2021. And uh, we have a few topics to, to cover today. So that's kind of awesome. Um, the first one was, uh, it was uh, Michael Adamiak. And I'm sorry if I'm butchering his name, but he was having some trouble with the uh, in-transit slips requiring two check-ins. He's actually running 1911. And um, is anybody else seeing this or experienced this? Or is everybody pretty much on 2005 now? We're on 2005. This is Lizette from Valnet. And it happens to us sometimes, and it was happening before we updated too, um, when if a transfer was canceled, like if a whole, like if an item was in transit, and this is still happening to us on 2011 or 25, um, if a hold was canceled in transit, like because staff went in and canceled it for some reason, then you have to check it in twice when it gets to your branch to send it either back home or on to wherever the next hold is. Um, but is he having to do it for every transfer? No, from what I saw, it was just, it was happening uh, occasionally. Let me look up his email. I'm assuming he's not here. I didn't see his name. Yeah, I'm not so. seeing his name here. A yeah. um, couple weeks ago, mentioned that sometimes when they check in that need a transfer, they have to check it in twice for the transfer receipt to properly print. I'm guessing then that they probably are having canceled holds or something. Hmm. Since, or at least that's what is happening to us, where we're having to double print it. Huh. We also had that issue <laughs> where um, it was like submitting the form twice simultaneously, and then like that would prevent the slip pop up from popping up. Um, I guess. Barbara's joined in on camera. I will do <laughs> I'm talking. Um, so. Um, I think that was mostly resolved with a couple of bugs in the upgrade, which I will put in the chat. Um, but basically what we were seeing, and it was affecting our quarantining too, because we were using the cart to quarantine things. Um, and if you check the logs, when you were using that very first check-in, anytime we checked in using the header bar was when it was happening. Um, and if you check the logs for the quarantine stuff, it would put them in quarantine and at the very exact same moment, take them back out of quarantine. Um, so it was like it was checking in twice at one time. Uh, and I think that was also causing our problems with the slips not printing because it was checking in something that had a hold twice at the same time. So we were missing that opportunity to hit the print button. Um, but then when we pressed it, uh, when we checked it in again, on the check-in screen, not in the header search, then the, the slip would print. And I think that's mostly been resolved with, with 2005. Um, I haven't had anybody complaining about it since our upgrade, but I, I'm interested to, to see uh, if we do have this issue that Lizette was talking about. So are you using a, a self, are you using like the stock coin or are you guys using AMHs? No, this is just for in the staff client, yeah. Yeah, same for us. I'm guessing that's why we probably are not seeing it because we use predominantly AMHs, so. So it kind of sounds like uh, going to 2005 solves the issue. Is that about right? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but Lizette, it sounded like she's still having some issues. Yeah, it might depend on, it might be that there's two problems going on here. And that this one doesn't come up as often after we updated where, because staff has to cancel holds that are in transit for it to come up, which we don't really do. Um, but our holds queue was broken for a while. I think that's all been fixed and isn't going to be a problem for anyone. But we also had like a very 
particular setup for our consortium because of how things were, who was open and who was closed and how everybody was dealing with it was really messed up. And so um, when we updated to 2005, the Holtz queue stopped working basically. Um, and so we had, we were canceling a lot more holds in transit because the holds queue was not telling us, um, we use the transportation cost matrix. So we'd have a lot of things that were like, well, this is going to take four days to get here. And then we're going to quarantine it for a week. But we also just pulled our copy for our patron. So we'd cancel the hold and check our new one in and then call the owning library and say, hey, we also had this and it's for our patron. Do you want to grab it off your shelf? before our courier comes to pick it up. And sometimes they didn't. So it would just still come in quarantine and then we'd check it in. But that's not happening as much now because our holds queue has been fixed for a while. All right. Um, so the next issue or moving right along next issue was from Barbara Barbara Johnson are you here do you want to explain it I am here and I hope I can explain it um when you can you hear me okay when you look at the patron record in patron details compared to when you look at the patron when you're on the checkout screen, the information at the top displays in a different order between those two screens. So it shows like, um, and I'm not real good at sharing screens, but let me try and see if I can do it. So can you see it? Yeah. Okay. So um, on this, this is the patron details screen. So up at the top, you've got, it goes charges, um, the restrictions and expiration notes and messages. But if you go to the checkout screen, it's in a different order. First, it's expiration, then restrictions, then charges. Is that the way it is for others? And if so, do you see a, it seems like it ought to be the same order on both screens to me, but I'm wondering if other libraries have um, reasons that they wouldn't want it to be the same. taking a look at one of my accounts right now uh i've never i didn't notice this but it might have just flown under my radar so yeah i'm seeing that it's out of order in our system too um you have some extra formatting on these messages it looks like maybe and that was another thing is I thought, you know, I better check and see if it was that way for others because I didn't know if I'd done something to make it behave differently. No, yeah, for me on the checkout screen, it goes restrictions, overdues charges, then messages. And on the detail screen, it goes charges, messages, then the restriction is down at the bottom and it's not as vibrant. Um, so yeah. I our CERT staff said that they preferred the view on the checkout because they wanted to see, of course, I expired this patron, um, but they said, you know, they wanted to see like restrictions and charges up top, that that was the first thing they wanted to see. Um, whereas on the details, um, you know, you're just kind of getting a different, it's just because it's a different view, it's like opposite. And do you think that it should be the same on both screens or do you have reasons do you think that libraries would want it differently? 
because I was going to put a bug in, so. I can't think of any reason why it shouldn't be consistent. I mean, I don't know what do other people think. I also feel like it's confusing that it's inconsistent. Um, it seems like it should be the same on both. Okay. So I will put a bug in on that. Awesome. All right, the second or the third topic was actually mine. It just came up today and uh, actually yesterday. And it was uh, once we went to 2005, um, our EDI stopped accepting invoices. Um, has that any, has that happened to anybody else? Actually, this is, I guess, more of a, an admin question, but. I guess, does anybody use EDI? We're not EDI, but I feel like on Slack that maybe I had seen a few people put in something about EDI and invoices and maybe it was after the upgrade. Yeah, I'll take a look. Yeah, it looks like Marcy at McKinney said something in Slack about EDI invoices not uh, getting stuck in pending. So you, you might, um, I would touch base with Bywater on, on that one, maybe. Yeah, someone's already submitted a ticket. I'm just wondering if anybody knew a hot fix, so. We don't do that either. We barely use acquisitions at all. We just use it for purchase suggestions. Yeah, I, I'm not even signed into Slack. I'll sign in later, take a look at it. But does anybody else have any uh, topics they wanted to go over? I have a question. I'm... Um... Put my video i was eating my lunch so i didn't want anybody to see me while i was eating um <laughs> i am looking to um have a report that will tell me when um like an item that is on hold or has a holds list is lost or um, claims returned because we don't have a good system for um, making sure that an item um, gets replaced for somebody who's been waiting on hold. And I wondered if anybody had a report out there. I can get a report that will pull up um, lost or missing, but it it doesn't pull up my claims returned. And it might be that we have our claims return set up differently, um, but I wondered if anybody had anything that would work for us. Or maybe tell me what y'all do if, if, if it's something that you address at your libraries or how do you handle that? Or is there somebody who just watches all the lost and claims returned items if they just watch the whole list or how does that work? So for the claim return, we have once a week at our branch, um, different people in our consortium handle it differently, mm -hmm. but at our branch, uh, once a week we look for the claim return items, and then once they've been looked for three times, including the day the claim is put in, or three other times if whoever put in the claim didn't look for the item on the shelf that day, then we mark it as a different status. We like check it in and resolve it, um, and mark it as a different like claim return 
lost status that we have. Um, and so then at that point, if there's a hold on it and there's it's either an item level hold or there's no other copies, then um, we email the librarians and we say there's holds, our item is claim return lost. Um, and then they'll decide if they want to cancel the hold or order a new copy and let us know and we either cancel the hold and put a note on the account like we would if we're looking for a hold. Um, if, we, if we're like looking for a hold and can't find it and it's the only copy, we'll mark it as lost and put a note on the patron's account that's like, we had to cancel the hold because we all copies are missing. So do you run a report to catch those or do you? So the ones that are, we have a report that's like uh, things that are on the holds list too long that yeah. haven't been filled. Mm -hmm. And that's how we do those ones. And then we do have a claim return lost for report that gets run monthly automatically and emailed to our librarians. And then the claim return one gets emailed to the claims return person um, every week also. And that's with the like reports cron job that Bywater can set up. Okay, so they set up a cron job for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, that would help. It's very helpful. We're doing all our monthly circulation stats that way too now. They okay. just get sent to our person and um, and all our like, we have a bunch of different lost statuses. We recently overhauled our whole lost process at our district. And so we've got like our, um, anything that's been lost and paid for that hasn't been taken care of already gets emailed to the librarians at the start of the month so they can deal with it. Um, we, cause we're, we let them know, but like if something fell through the cracks and they didn't get it, then we can still get that out of the system as soon as possible. And, um, yeah, we have, I think we have like 28 reports being run on a regular basis right now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's very helpful. I mean, consortium wide, yeah. consortium wide, yeah. we probably have that many because there are a few that are like a specific branch had something particular they wanted run and sent to them. Um, but it's, it's very helpful. It takes a while to get it set up. If you have more than a couple reports, um, we recently changed, we had had some that were sending like just to certain people, but not others. And, um, we recently like added some and changed some of the addresses. So it would be easier, like in the future, if as positions change, we're trying right. to set it up so that um, like it's going to either mailing lists or generic email addresses that like um, people will still keep getting through changeovers so that we hopefully don't have to have, you know, put in tickets whenever there's one person who's on the mailing list changes. Um, and so like, it can take a little while to get it set up, but if you just have one or two reports, um, it's pretty easy, it seems like for them to set it up okay. and they can send it with an attachment, which if you're doing anything that's more than, like it doesn't print super nicely in the email. Mm -hmm. So we get all ours with attachments, like as CSVs, like if you downloaded it. Thank you very much. So I don't know, this probably isn't exactly what you want, but I do have an orphaned holds report that we use that. Um, I like the name already. <laughs> basically it checks to see if the goal of the report, I don't know how efficient it is, is to see if there are no copies available on the record to fill outstanding holds. Um, but we're in a, in a consortium. So it's formatted in a way that it's like, hey, this library over here isn't going to fill your hold, so you need to come in and do something about that hold. Um, so you may need to tweak it a little. I can put it in the chat. I'm not, it may lose. Uh, no, I can't put it in the chat. I'm going to paste it in the agenda, maybe. Okay. And that'll keep the formatting. Ooh, it's real big. Maybe I don't want all that formatting. <laughs> Okay, so I pasted it in the agenda. Also, I don't think that we don't use claims return, so it's not taking that into consideration. So you may need to add that. Um, but the the magic is in the the select statements. 
where it's counting how many statuses are on the item um, and then it's counting how many items are on the record and then it's comparing the two to see if the hold can be filled or not. Um, so like I said, it's probably not exactly what you need, but it might have some logic in there that can help you okay. uh, get it massaged and out. Since item uh, claim return uses an item loss status. So oh, it still it, does? Yeah, so it, okay. that should be fine. Yeah, yeah you so just define it, a loss status is what you want. To it covers it withdrawn, loss, damaged, not for loan. And then I have it, our item type for doesn't circulate is DC, so that's in there. Um, also, our, that would be branches. Uh, I think those are the only two custom, like to us, pieces of information in there. So worth a shot, if nothing All else. Right. Thank you. Great. Anybody else have that, anything they wanted to discuss? Well, I guess I'll just say that uh, Mary and Jacqueline and I, we're all here and we're all from Bedford. We have been working on an overdue three notice using template toolkit. And it's been a process for sure. Um, Lucas had us um, using putting the code into the overdues slip and then using that as a test to see to go into the patron account and look at the overdue slip and see what the content was and that all worked great but then when we went to print it none of the CSS or none of none of it printed the way that was actually in the template toolkit. And it was partly because that preview isn't a real preview of what you get. I don't know. I didn't completely understand it. But so we worked back and forth with fonts and spacing and different elements. But we finally, um, I think, have got it. We've made one last change on the font size. But our goal was to include um, subtitle, part number, part name, so that you would get a full title and you wouldn't just get, you know, diary, wimp, diary of a wimpy kid, but you wouldn't get the rest of it. So you didn't know which one you had, that kind of thing. Or for TV series. Um, and we wanted to get, sometimes we have our TV series are broken up so that disc one and disc two are in one case and three and four are in another case. So we wanted the patron to have all that detail of exactly what they had checked out. And then we included um, replacement cost and um, Mary wrote a whole bunch of verbiage. Um, we, we finally went fine free. So we kind of made our, our overdue three a little more okay you know you've reached the end and your privileges have been suspended and here's what you have and here's what it costs um but i think it's finally all come together and um so it it was a process but it, it got us we were writing down some additional things on the notice because we couldn't get it in the notice when we were using the hungry alligator type stuff so um, anyway. Yeah, Jacqueline used to long hand out all these like, you know, notes of what volume number and, you know, what book number, whatever. And um, why your item didn't overdo, over uh, renew or whatever. And so um, it kind of, when Jacqueline was on vacation and I had to fill in, I was like, man, this is not happening. I'm not doing this. <laughs> so, so. Poor Jacqueline suffered for years. <laughs> I had to do it like twice and I was like, ah! <laughs> so does the, I haven't, we talked about this at other meetings about how I'm avoiding template toolkit, but do, does all the like CSS and stuff actually go into the template too? Like when you're building the template? Right, so all the, the fields from the template toolkit 
are in there and then um, we put all the CSS in there. And part of the problem I was coming up with is like there's a whole bunch of repetitive CSS in there, which I hate to see because it just seems like shouldn't it be cleaner and but I would I would add the CSS to a section and it would um, you know I would think I'd be affecting the whole notice and it's like but it's only affecting this section and I'm going through and it's like but I'm targeting the right piece so finally I ended up with like every every div has all of the, <laughs> okay, so the you're font again and it has the Are size you, again and you know all of that the style gets defined in line in html is that how it looks okay yeah. someday i'll get around to doing my redoing my notices <laughs> that's how i did it for our hold slips that we talked about at whichever meeting that was okay. it's just like each div has you know div h2 or whatever set in, in for each div and I think what made this so much more tedious is because it was overdues, we had to make a change, wait for the overdues to run, print out the overdues the next day, see if the changes were good or bad or whatever. And then some days I didn't want to make too many changes, you know, so we were really stepping it through. Um, but uh, yeah, I think we're there now. Yeah, we had that problem too with our uh, our third notices, which we print out and send to people, and it has been kind of a chore to to fix it because the yeah you know, the the overdue print slip can get that looking beautiful, but it just doesn't translate into the the overdue notices. So. completely unrelated. Does anybody use Twilio? Have you looked at that at all? We're looking at it and we're really only at the stage of, of the looking at, we think we need to switch to it. And I haven't looked at how it gets set up or um, the last time I looked, it looked like we, we probably would only do it for text messages. Um, mm -hmm. And it seemed like the cost would be reasonable and that we could cover it. I think it's old pricing perhaps. So it, it may be different now, but we're interested in it. That's, I mean, I'm only leaning that way because I know there's already a plugin and I've there's word on the street that the email to text thing isn't gonna work forever, so. I just wondered if anybody was already using it. <sighs> Another thing to look forward to. <laughs> Has anybody else looked at Patron Point? Third Sounds part. familiar. It's a, it's got like, seems like many different elements. Um, you can target your notices and your communications to like specific parts of your patron base. So if I only wanted to send, um, you know, some, and some of this would be within Koha and some would be, you know, outside. So if I only wanted to send some kind of, you know, communications to parents with children, you know, I could set up, I don't know, like profiles and stuff and they can, you know, target specific messages, but one of the things about it too was within, not really within Koha, but I guess using your, the people who need to get your notices, they'll send out these like really beautiful notices so they don't look just like um, plain email. They're almost like, 
like that. I think they had read light. Like if you got an advanced do notice or something like that, it had also it had stuff in there like the cover image and it had read likes and it had you know so it had all this extra stuff. Um, is that what you remember, Mary? Yeah, and then the other part of it, there was an aspect of um, um, identification for getting uh, library cards. Um, yeah, you could like a patron would fill out a form online and then they would verify um, that they were really living at this address, they were really a resident or whatever. Um, the only thing that I didn't like about that aspect of it was um, we, we always asked for photo ID. And um, so when I asked the question to our rep, I said, you know, how they come in to get their card how do we know that it's really them if you don't, you know, require them to um, show a photo ID because they get their card and then we really wouldn't know that it was that person. And he didn't really have an answer for that. So <laughs> um, I could just foresee somebody getting a card and not really being the person who they say they are, which could be problematic, especially if you were that person. <laughs> so. But yeah, it was, I mean, a lot of their marketing materials were beautiful, looked very professional. So we're using library aware right now for a lot of our different things. And uh, our librarians, a lot of our librarians are very creative and um, they don't like the restrictions that library aware has. So they're more um, apt to do their own, <laughs> so. Yeah, we have library aware as well. And I find that I, there's some that really like it and some that like cut their teeth on publisher and they're mm -hmm. upset that they can't control more. Canva. Uh, yeah. yeah. But this does get, I mean, this gives me ideas for other uses of library where, I mean, we could make like a cool overdue notice template <laughs> um, to send out via library where, because we do for some of my libraries do unique management and they'll send out their third or like we'll get through the three notices in Koha and then they'll send out additional notices afterwards so they could like possibly use library aware for that but I think they're they're mailing them right now um yeah. I don't know All right, any other topics? I definitely had something. I definitely don't remember what it was. Uh, it was there a few minutes ago. Okay, so I'm, I don't really understand this chat thing. So I don't see the link, Jason, that you were gonna send. How do I get to that? So I linked the agenda. It's like the first, the Google Doc up there. Do you see that one? Yeah. Okay. So it's if on If you there. click on that one, I pasted it into the agenda because when I went to paste oh, the, okay. the report into the chat, it cut it off because it was too much. Thank you. Uh huh. I know it was something upgrade related that I wanted to talk about. I don't remember what. <laughs> We upgraded last week. Um, the biggest problem we had was that it was keeping the uh, search terminology populated in the search bar. Um, so I I used jQuery to fix that, but it was causing me big headaches. Because uh, if you scan into barcode and then scan in another barcode, it wouldn't clear the first barcode. And that was like apocalyptic level uh <laughs> stuff at my library <laughs> so uh had to figure out how to wipe that out pretty fast yeah that showed up the next morning we got complaints about that and it was uh luckily i think danny or lucas had already put the jquery in the in slack so we just copied and pasted and solved that issue so far so yeah and mine my, my issue was like the the jquery that they sent me was using a an onload 
like a window load instead of a document ready. So it had to wait for the whole page to load to clear the term. And on the details screen, we have novelist and sometimes novelist takes seconds to, to load. So it would take, a, there was a pretty substantial lag between uh, lo like pulling up the page and the terminology getting cleared. Um, so I had to dig into it more and uh, figure out why, but I think I did. And now it's all better. <laughs> but I need to comment on that bug about why it should be an option instead of just a thing that's on for the staff client. Sorry, I have a little, a very talkative kitten that's bothering me right now. So you might hear him in the background. But uh, did anybody else have anything? And she bites. Oh. oh, I have one. Um, did anybody else notice that some of the images broke on their advanced search? After the upgrade, we were using like, we're using a variety of the icons for collection code and like the bridge icons broke because they were, they were gifts in the code, but now they're pings or something. I just thought that was something. Maybe nobody else uses images on their advanced search. Uh, we don't use images at all, so sorry, no. We use images, and now that you say that, I think there are three that used to have images that don't, but we never noticed. Because <laughs> it's things, it's like three item types that we don't really use for searching. Like, they're, they're not things we use very much, so at least I don't use them for searching, because our branches don't use them. Try to look at the item type table now and see if they actually just don't have anything selected. I really want to redo those someday, make my own icons, make them consistent. Because we're using like some from the bridge set, some from the kid set, some from the shiny set, whatever they are. <laughs> vocal. Yeah. They're using a lot from vocal. And they don't all match up with what we use. I think it would be nice to have like a consistent icon set there. Yeah, I think that these just didn't have an image before, but I can't recall for sure. I thought that everything had at least one, at least had something, even if it was just those like color block ones. Mine, are, but, mine were like really broken, like instead of the image, it would have a little broken image icon. Okay, we're not having that, at least not on the staff side. Oh, and Lizette, you asked me what version, what point version a while back oh, yeah. we were getting upgraded to. We're on 20.05.08. So how far behind are you? I think we're a couple behind now. <laughs> you might want to ask for an upgrade. Well, I asked, yeah, we're 06. Okay. Yeah, yeah we're so we're two behind. Two, and we were an early adopter like you, Lizette, right? So yeah. yeah. Uh, I asked Megs about it at a meeting last week and she said she thought we'd probably get updated to 09 when the people who just finished upgrading get upgraded like next month uh -huh. <laughs> that they probably just do that unless there was something from seven or eight that was like we need it now because it's a problem for us so So it's possible that was broken in one of the point upgrades that we don't have yet, Jason. Yay, I'm the early adopter now.
All right, anything else? Well, I was gonna ask now that um, the schedule for upgrades was altered this time, do you think that going to what would 2011, I guess is next, do you think that stays on track the way Bywater normally did kind of a spring and Yes, I was talking to Kelly about it last week. And it sounds like that's the plan. Um, but because because I made a comment about, you know, it sounds like you're almost done with all the these upgrades next almost time for the 2011 stuff. And she just went, oh, my gosh, it is. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't I don't think that they're planning on pushing that back or probably not more than like a month mm -hmm. that that does give them some time in between finishing i think either everybody is upgraded to 2005 now or this week is the last week of it and then um and then i think they're going to try to finish the infrastructure updates like in march but early adopters aren't usually till end of april or early may anyway at the the soonest times that i've heard um I know like the first couple of years we didn't upgrade until mid June. We weren't early adopters, but I would guess the early adopters wouldn't have gone till like mid May that year. Mm -hmm. So Okay, so I remembered my problem. <laughs> it's something that appeared after the upgrade. Um but like does anybody use holds policies to restrict, this is probably a consortium thing, to restrict items from one library be, being put on hold at another library or to like prevent that? Yes. So for example, bit. we have all these new item types. So we've got new book, new, new visual media, new audio media. Um, and most of my libraries freely share their new stuff which we love. This is the whole sharks and the fishes if you were at that presentation way back when. Um, so the the sharks, they share, the fishes, they don't. Um, and we've noticed recently, possibly related to the upgrade, possibly not, but like sometimes the hold can get on the record from, from a non-sharer. Um, and then that hold can be triggered when it's checked in. So I, before it seemed like there was a block there. Like even if the hold got on the record, if you checked in the item, then the person that wasn't allowed to borrow that new hold couldn't, it wouldn't trigger it. This might be related to our problem we had, Jason, where we had been using the library transfer limits partially to prevent holds from being placed on libraries that weren't open to the consortium because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And so after we upgraded, it stopped preventing people from placing those holds. Is it letting them place the hold for at their home branch or for pickup at the owning branch or even it's... worse, the first branch alphabetically where it could be picked up? So it's letting, like, it doesn't let them place the hold unless, my problem is, like, I had this record and there were five marked new and one that was marked not new, so shareable, so they were able to place the hold. Um, but if they were all marked new, then they can't place the hold. Mm -hmm. But once, since that hold got through, the hold could then be triggered. And before, I don't think the hold would be triggered. Um, yeah. Because of so the the policy in place. So I think that this is related to the same problem. It's letting them place the hold because they can place on the one shareable. Um, how we fixed it was by turning the holds groups on and limiting that way for each branch, but then that was broken. And so that's like related. And I don't know that that particular part has been fixed yet. We just have all of our branches are open now to the whole consortium. So we were able to not worry about that as much. Okay. But I think it is related to that. And I don't know what caused, it seems from what 
when we met with some folks from Bywater about it, it seemed like it was related to code in the holds group code. Um, the bug that added the holds group functionality. I do see a big red bug that got pushed to stable in 2005 flat, uh, where the hold pickup library match is not enforced correctly when using hold groups. I wonder if that's the one. Uh, but then. But you don't have hold groups turned on, do you? That's right. But maybe I should. I mean, I could have a shark group and a fish group, and that might solve my problem. I could have a shark uh, group and multiple fish groups because they're all on their own little island. <laughs> um, let me check real quick. I'm pretty sure, well, I'm pretty sure that the thing that fixed the holds queue for library groups is in the version that you're on. But before you turn it on, you should double check that because that would be bad, not good. All our holds reports broke. <laughs> Yeah, I'll probably test it in my test server a little bit and see if I can get it working again. Worst case scenario, I can put some jQuery in to put a little fish icon on the ones that might not need triggered or something. I don't know. <sighs> Will the fish get mad if they find out? No, the fish have agreed to this. Oh, okay. This, this is the, the reciprocal sharing since they they don't share their new items, they're not allowed to uh, get new items from other libraries. So that's part of the deal. They're not allowed to get mad. I do have a whale on my shirt today too, just in case that's relevant. <laughs> what libraries are those? The whales, I don't know. <laughs> Are they the ones that buy the most new books and share them? Uh, maybe. I could have a new kit. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. That fits the definition of a whale, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the whales are the ones that are top priority in my transport cost matrix. On that note, yeah. <laughs> has That's anybody a, else ever anything to share? I don't have any more aquatic things. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, you know, your fish and sharks—they they wouldn't be on islands; they'd be in reefs, wouldn't they? Yeah. So <laughs> I created uh, like I started with the sharks and fishes, and that confused people. So now I have like this map where it's geography. So there's immediate sharing topia. And then the de delayed sharing islands, um, where each delayed share is on their own island. So they've become interchangeable a little bit. You have a very interesting brain. <laughs> or consortium, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I um, oh, I put sorry. The bug for the holds queue thing in the chat, Jason in case that becomes helpful. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll take a look. I'm actually at home right now, so I'm gonna have to go through this video and look at those bugs again, just to make sure that we're not seeing the same things that our, our uh, district, so. All right, we got eight minutes left in the hour. Does anybody have anything else? Anybody looking for uh, looking forward to 2011? Yes, I'm very excited for damage status will show in the check-in table. So you can see if something's been left like in Menden without getting fixed when you check it in, for example. It's like we're a week after upgrade and we're already looking at the new version. So. I mean, Barbara and I have been updated since what, November, October? Something like that. Yeah. Brave souls. Very yeah. brave. I guess there were only like seven or eight early adopteds this update. 
And I'm like, it was me, Barbara, and Bob, at least. That's like half of them right there. And this was our first time. This was our... Doctor. I think we did it 2018. Fall of 2018 was our first time because they convinced us when we were at Portland to, to give it a try. Which, I mean... It works out for us because when we're not early adopters, we still end up being the people who find the bugs. Uh, <laughs> like, especially weird consortium bugs that are only happen with like certain setups. Mm -hmm. And so we figure, well, if we're early adopters, there's only like eight of us adopt, uh, updating at a time. So they have more time to fix things for us. Because there's not like a hundred libraries updating one week or whatever. So exciting in relation to circulation. I put that bug in the chat. Um, grouping circulation by item type is coming in 2011, um, mm -hmm. which should be really helpful for us um, because we have visual media and new visual media, and we'll be able to group those and limit enforce the limits there instead of having to fake enforce them like they am right now. We don't even really fake enforce them. We decided that was too much trouble. Uh... So right now it's five each, but like DVDs, Blu-rays, new DVDs, new Blu-rays, and two week checkout for like TV shows that are long enough. Uh, so that ends up pretty. Yeah, ours aren't that granular. Yeah. <laughs> we used to have, our, our item types used to be things like 21D, 1R, 0F for 21 days, <laughs> under new, no fine. Um, and I took all that away when I started. So now we've got book, we've got visual media, we've got audio media, and those are the big three. Um, it expands out a little bit from there, but yeah, that's one of those things that I didn't want to like spread out a lot in the consortium setting. But then I added all the new ones, which doubled everything, so happy to dial that back in a little bit yeah um if anyone uses batch checkout uh there's the ability to set a due date now on the batch checkout screen uh which might be handy especially if you're like gonna be closed or something If you have the thing set up where there's like too many failed login attempts, it locks them out. That'll show in more places on the patron screen for the staff side. Oh, uh, multiple parts handling confirmation alert. So that's like if you have the materials specified, you can turn on that people have to press like a yes all these buttons all these are here button on check-in uh it requires a system preference but so you can say like yes i want to make them say it contains all its parts so that they'll hopefully actually check <laughs> um it would be nice if you could do it based on item type like we have some things that would be nice for but we have our materials specified for like all our audiobooks and dvds which like our staff are pretty good about checking that, but for some of our like more specialty items, it might be nice to have the like reminder. And also I wonder, I haven't checked to see if that like saves anything in a field that could be reported on. So you could say when it was checked in, it was confirmed, but I guess it probably doesn't check in if you don't confirm it. You have to actually confirm it, like say, yes, all the parts are here. Yeah, that's what the, it's a new system preference. Ah, uh, I see. That's why I was saying it would be nice for item type specific, if you could do it that way. So you could say, like, we only want it on our maker kits. Oh, I got you. But not on all our DVDs and audiobooks. Yeah. It would be nice if you could set it to, like, the 300 description instead of the material specified, too. Mm-hmm have that option because we don't use the material specified field.
If you put in a bug, I'll support it. I have a whole list of things I need to put bugs in on, and I haven't touched it in weeks, months, possibly years, because I'm bad. Oh, on a check-in, if you have transfers, when you're doing a check-in, it'll say that the item check-in resulted in the completion of a transfer instead of just saying local use recorded, um, which might be helpful, like, especially with newer staff, we always seem to get questions about, like, well, it was in transit, why does it just say local use recorded? Yes, I'm very excited for that one. We talked, was it the consortium meeting last week that we were talking about this, Jason? Yeah, the consortium meeting that we were just going to end early, remember? And then we got into all this interesting stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, that's about an hour's worth of uh, chatting about Koha circulation. So I think we can call this a, a successful new yes. meeting, so. Yes, great. Yeah, it's great okay. seeing you all. And uh, hopefully we'll see you next month or at another SIG meeting. So everybody take care and uh, hopefully you're having great weather. Okay. Bye. Yeah. See ya. <laughs>